Uh, thank you, and I think the, the organizers have been thanked many times, but I'd like to thank them one more for a very well-run uh, meeting so far. Although now we've come to the Wild West session of the uh, schedule, so we'll have to see. So um, gauge gravity duality gives a non-perturbative construction of quantum gravity in various special space-times. Uh, I've written those words many times, and so have many of you. And I'd like to here think about the question, just how complete is it? Uh, in particular, we have this very sharp dictionary for observables at the boundary, and it becomes less sharp as we move into the interior. Uh, but maybe that's fine. Maybe that's as good as we can do in quantum gravity, because in quantum gravity, we don't have, it's hard to find sharp observables. The boundary of spaces like anti dissider is very special because the metric is pinned down. It's one of the rare cases in quantum gravity where there are simple sharp observables. And, and so maybe these approximate observables in the interior are the best we can do. So now we have a sharp question, this shady group uh, with the questionable acronym of AMPS, or maybe AMPS, um, have proposed that the black hole interior is in a highly excited state. And so can we test this by using gauge gravity duality? So, um, oops, oops, wrong way. So first, I'd like to give a uh, new and I hope simpler version of the AMPS argument, um, which is very good for this context. Uh, then second, limits on gauge gravity duality. And those are the main items, but as time allows, I'd like to make a few comments on this new idea that Juan is going to talk about, and also on a question that comes up a lot in the firewall story, um, well, number four. Okay, so, so first, the new argument. First, let me tell you about the black holes that we're gonna be um, studying. Oops, uh, somehow the colors aren't right, but it doesn't really matter. Anyway, on the left is, um, that's odd. On the left is um, anti-de-sitter space. The, uh, see, on the left is the, the, the boundary anti-de-sitter space where the conformal field theory lives, and the uh, red dots depict uh, local conformal field theory operators. And so I simply want to consider all, first of all, consider all states that one can create by acting on the vacuum with some collection of local operators, and in most quantum field theories, that's all of them. Um, and especially I want to focus on states with high enough energy that, that one's basically in the deconfined phase, meaning that the dual picture is a black hole. And so on the right is the dual picture, that is, one is throwing things into the interior with these local operators, throwing enough of them in to make a black hole, which then hangs around uh, afterwards. So, so we're talking about black holes which are in the interior and which form and collapse and the complete space of those. Okay, so, um, and now there's some, 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 a little bit of quantum field theory in this the black hole background that we need to discuss just for, for, for notation. Um, so, so B here is our notation for the Hawking modes. These are just the natural, more positive frequency wave packets that the observer at infinity would talk about. Um, I call them Hawking modes, of course, because we're in anti-de-sitter space. Uh, anything in them, any excitations will bounce off the boundary and return to the black hole. Uh, but still, it, that doesn't change the, their identification here near the horizon. And of course, because it's a horizon, you can see those, are not, they, those don't cover the whole space. So to cover the rest of the space, uh, we need another set of modes, B tilde. Tilde means inside. Um, but if you're an infalling observer, then uh, you wouldn't want to use modes that start and stop abruptly at the horizon. You'd want to use a different set of modes that smoothly cross the horizon. And so there's some relation between the, the, the A modes, the infalling person's modes, and the B modes, and it's a Vogeliabov transformation. Now, um, these A modes, as you, you can kind of see from the picture, they're getting scrunched up towards the boundary, towards the horizon as you go back in time, so they have very high frequency. And so the, the normal understanding of a black hole would be that the adiabatic principle says they're in their ground state. 
And if they're in their ground state, um, okay, they're in their ground state, but of course, because of this Bogoyabov transformation, if the A modes are in their ground state, the B modes, the outgoing modes are not, this is Hawking radiation. This is this sort of the simplest way to uh, derive Hawking radiation from the ground state, from, from again, the fact that A, the adiabatic principle for A, and then the Bogoyabov transformation that gets you to B. Um, now, now, all this is happening inside ADS space, and this mode B, which is outside the horizon, has an image in the conformal field theory. Uh, the image, the hat, means an operator in the conformal field theory. And these images were constructed shortly after Juan's original paper. Um, you simply, and, and you, sim you simply take these modes, expand them in a complete set outside, and then use the standard ADS-CFT dictionary to relate the coefficients of this mode expansion to operators in the boundary. And at, at order n to the zero, that's all free field theory. And again, it was done, again, by several groups shortly after Juan's paper. Um, and this is expandable in 1 over n. It took a while to do this in a nice way. Um, but it, in fact, for the purposes of how I'm going to use this dictionary between B in the bulk and B hat in the conformal field theory, um, one doesn't need really high precision, just order one uh, agreement. So it's not something that's sensitive to really small effects. So now, um, so what's the argument then for the firewall? So let's consider now a, a basis for this Hilbert space of black hole states in which the, um, in which the number operator for this B operator is diagonal. Now, in the vacuum for the infalling observer, um, the uh, B is thermal. It's not in an eigenstate. It's in some some. It populates a range of, of values with a with a thermal probability. Um, so so it, the A vacuum, um, the A vacuum gives a state in which B is thermal. If B is not thermal, if B is in an eigenstate, any eigenstate then this differs by order one from the, the, the A vacuum and instead is a state in, in, all of, in, in this entire basis of states. In each element of this basis, the expectation value for the number of A excitations, excitations seen by the infalling observer, is order one or larger. And now we can um, take, the, take the trace to form an average. And again, since this is positive, and it's, it's order one or larger in every state, uh, it's order one or larger on average. And that's true, okay, that's true for each mode. And, okay. um, and so what it says is that um, on the average in these many black hole states, every mode, uh, every, every mode that the infalling observer would see is populated. So that's, that's the firewall argument. It's, it's not the usual version. It depends on many of the same assumptions. For example, it depends on, on being able to sort of integrate the, the, the field B from the horizon to the boundary, but again, only to enough accuracy to distinguish a thermal ensemble from a, a diagonal uh, um, state. Um, it depends implicitly on the idea that the black hole has a finite density of states, so a unitarity. Um, it, however, one thing it has that in one way it's which it differs from, from the usual argument is there's no reference to entanglement or anything. And in fact, all of these black holes in this basis are, are pure states. And so it, 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 it's what it says is that the typical, not all of them, but the typical pure, um, typical black hole state in ADS-CFT uh, has a firewall. Unless there's some mistake in the reasoning. So that's part one, the file argument. Now, um, so now, so now that I've said this, well, one way you could check this reasoning is the following. Since we have this theory of quantum gravity in the bulk, let us find what operator in the conformal field theory is dual to the matter energy momentum tensor at some point behind the horizon, and C, calculate this expectation value and see if it's true that this is non-zero, that this is non-zero, that we're in an excited state. Now, having said that, there are two problems. The obvious problem is 
what is the dictionary? How, do, how is there? What is? How do we identify? How do we identify uh, the operator in the control field theory, uh, which is dual to the energy momentum tensor inside the black hole? Um, and it's a less obvious problem, but more severe, which is that there, that there may be no such dictionary at all. So um, the argument for that is the following. So first, I want to uh, go back and, and say a little bit more about dictionary for B. Roughly speaking, you can think about this. So here's my black hole now shown as a Penrose diagram. So all the infilling matter is scrunched into a, is scrunched up by a boost. Um, here's a, so you can think of roughly speaking, your you have a, if you have a field outside, you can integrate sideways to the boundary to express this field in terms of boundary operators. Now, integrating sideways isn't usual Cauchy evolution, but when you look at it more closely, it's actually, it's not, it's overdetermined. The relation between B and B hat is overdetermined, but that's okay because the amount of overdetermination, well, that means that if you had generic boundary data, these operators wouldn't exist, but we don't have generic boundary data. The boundary data, in fact, these operators are, are constrained by the ADS-C FT duality, and that's precisely the amount of information to allow these bulk operators to exist. Now, if we try that same strategy for a point behind the horizon, you see that as we integrate outwards, we run into the singularity, and without having some kind of boundary condition at the singularity, we have no way to construct this operator. However, there's lots of ways to do this. Again, it's overdetermined. We could instead integrate back in time via normal Cauchy evolution um, to some point before the, the black hole formed, and then now we no longer have the horizon to worry about, integrate sideways to the boundary. And this was described by uh, Freivogel and Susskind some time ago and implemented in a little more detail more recently. But there's a problem here uh, which wasn't recognized, which is the following. So as you integrate backwards, again, the modes are becoming more and more blue shifted. That was the point I made earlier. Um, and so if you try to construct operators too, at too late of a time, as you integrate backwards, you find that you reach a point where the evolution involves some kind of trans planckian collision between the mode inside the horizon and the infalling shell. And you don't know how to go further. Maybe you can't go further because the most likely outcome is that there'd be some singularity here. And so we don't have the tools. We don't have the tools to figure out how to express this operator in terms of operators in, uh, the, the conform in, the, in the conformal field theory. But it's actually worse than that. So um, here's a, a simple counting argument which says that there's no operator with the necessary properties. What are those properties? First of all, just that uh, the operator and its adjoint form the usual um, mode algebra. And second, uh, the appropriate commutator with the overall Hamiltonian. Now, this is a bit funny because I'm, suppo I'm supposing here that the outside Hawking mode has is narrowly centered on some positive frequency omega. Its partner, again, tilde means inside and hat means the image in the conformal field theory. Its partner lowers the energy. That's very, that's funny, you know, you read in the literature about black holes, the Hawking partners have negative energy. And that has a precise state, meaning this is it. And, and again, it, it, it's strange to have negative energy, but remember the killing vector that is related to H is space-like behind the horizon. And so behind the horizon, this, it's, this is a momentum and it can be positive or negative. Okay, now let's see where this leads to a problem. So let's consider all of these black hole states in some narrow range of energies, there's a lot of them. And now let's consider the states that we get by acting with the creation operator for this mode behind the horizon. And because of this commutator, they have less energy. But that means there are fewer of them. There are fewer of these states than there are of these states by exactly a thermal factor, e to the minus beta omega, which is a number of order one over e. So this means since there are fewer states of this form than we originally had, that, B, that this raising operator has a kernel. But a raising operator can't have a kernel because if we raise, we can always lower again. So um, this goes one step beyond the previous slide, which argued there's a problem with the construction. So this says there's a fundamental problem with the idea 
that this construction of fields in the bulk, which, which by now for outside the black hole is well explored, that there's a fundamental problem with extending that into the interior. So um, I'll off I don't know what this means, but I'll offer you four possible interpretations of it. Um, the first is that there's no such operator because there's no interior. That's a simple answer. Maybe that's right, but we should try harder. Um, the second is the following. So these commutators that I've used are sort of the free limit, but maybe for highly excited states, um, they get corrections, and the argument that I gave you is that maybe you get positive terms over here uh, or, or zeros over here, and, and, and the argument is evaded. And that's fine, but, but because, again, the kernel, the kernel is huge. The kernel is a half, roughly half the size of the whole, whole space for each mode. And so if you look at many modes, the kernel is almost the entire space. Um, and so this would imply that almost all states are highly excited. So, so both, bo both interpretation one and interpretation two uh, lead again to a firewall. Interpretation three is more subtle. It's, it's what's come to be called strong complementarity, though I would have called it weak complementarity. So let's suppose that the interior of the black hole exists. So um, in the standard interpretation of black hole complementarity, I think most of us, I think it's fair to call a standard, this is what most of us would have believed. If you consider the effective field theory of the infalling observer, you would have thought that, that effect, the Hilbert space of that effective field theory is embedded in the Hilbert space of the conformal field theory. But now it can't be, it can't be because um, this, these, these, these mode operators exist in the effective field theory and they don't exist in the conformal field theory. And so um, what it must be is that the um, Hilbert space of the conformal field theory maps only to a subspace of this internal effective field theory, namely those states that form and collapse. So what this would say is that each observer has their own Hilbert space and there is no global Hilbert space. Okay, now actually in retrospect, this should have been obvious and maybe some people said things like this. Because even in the convention, even before firewalls, in the, in the with the standard understanding of black holes, for the for, because of the adiabatic principle, all the states that you form are in their ground state. You don't form a full set of effective field theory states inside. And so, even in the conventional, even even without firewalls, even with the conventional understanding of black hole dynamics, this must be true that that this Hilbert space is is not part of the Hilbert space of the conformal field theory. But, but it means that the operators that you, so, so I propose that we, we, we find the image of the energy momentum tensor in the control field theory, and now you see the image doesn't exist. Uh, so, so you can't ask um, the question you want to ask. In fact, in fact the, the thing that you can't see, this mode B tilde, is exactly the mode that's supposed to populate the firewall. And so my interpretation from thinking about various examples is that you simply cannot answer this question in the conformal field theory, there, there is no observable there that measures it. That, that, again, that's, that's my interpretation of this fact um, as, and, and, and further attempts to, to try to um, extend this. Now, with the firewall argument, it's a different subspace that forms. Um, it's not the one in which the, the um, the infalling modes are in the vacuum, but it, it would still be a sub, by the kernel argument, it would still be a subspace of, of the effective field theory. Okay, um, you can ask whether the argument from part one still applies, and I, the, the argument that it does is, is the following. So, so here's our infalling observer, and this infalling observer can see the, you know, can, can measure the modes B and B tilde, but also they can see the entire formation of the black hole. So actually, if you want to ask what Hilbert space do you need to describe all possible observations they might make, it's actually bigger than the Hilbert space of the conformal field theory. And the, Hilbert, the conformal field theory Hilbert space maps to a smaller Hilbert space, um, which, is just, which is just those states that can form and collapse. And so now the B argument from part one 
can be pulled from the conformal field theory Hilbert space into the Hilbert space of the infilling observer and, and, and still applies. Uh, the fourth possible interpretation is, um, so um, I'll start to go more quickly here, but in a typical conformal field theory state, the distribution of, of, of this number operator is thermal. Uh, so it's a clever construction by these folks, which shows that if you assume or know that some particular conformal field theory state is the informing va infalling vacuum, you can, you can um, then build an effective field theory on top of that. But of course, by the counting argument, this can't be the entire space, it's some special subspace. And now, if you want to try to avoid the firewall, you have to assume that whatever state the black hole was, 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 um, was prepared in is in fact the base state on which you build this construction. Um, Her Herman Verlinda calls this choice of base state pinning the tail on the quantum donkey, but it really brings in, as do many ideas, subtle quantum nonlinearities because normal quantum operators, normal quantum operators are linear maps from states to states. Now, before we can interpret some state of this inf uh, some state of this Hilbert space, we have to know what the the base space was that we used to build the construction. So this this makes operators more like transistors. Um, anyway, anyway, I think that this is interesting. It needs a lot of work. Um, the thumbnail description of it is God not only plays dice with the world, she also plays pin the tail on the quantum donkey. So that's my main two points, and I have three minutes to go quickly. So Juan is Juan and Lenny have have made Sussend. Juan and Lenny have made very interesting uh, conjectures um, about the connection between entanglement and geometry. Um, as Juan showed many years ago, um, the eternal, the, the two-sided eternal geometry um, calculates correlators in a very special state of two conformal field theories, the thermofield state. Um, and Douglas, uh, Stan, uh, Stanford, and, Stanford and Schenker have, um, have asked what happens if you perturb one side. And I want to ask similarly a generic question. Um, if if um, you consider instead of the thermal field state, a generic equal, so, so the, the hope here is that entanglement implies geometry in some form. Suppose we have another state that is just as entangled as the thermal field state, but is not the thermal field state. For example, suppose you have two copies of the conformal field theory and you put them in contact so they exchange energy and come to equilibrium, they have a large entanglement, would that state have a geometric interpretation? And um, I think the answer is no. So what do I mean by a geometric interpretation? Well, the two-point functions in ADS look like this. They fall exponentially for a while. And then when they get small enough, they're swamped by kind of random oscillations, quasi-oscillations, that come from random phases and depend on the microstructure of the, of the spectrum. And so I'm calling this kind of behavior geometric because it be calculated geometrically, and this kind of behavior non-geometric because um, there's no known way to get this bit of the co correlator from geometry. And so here's where I want to assert that in this sense, if we take a general state, a general entangled state here instead of the, the thermal field state, then um, the correla all correlators are are all correlates between the, between the two sides are non-geometric. There's no geometric calculation. Uh, I won't go through the argument. It uses the fact that um, operators in the energy eigenstate basis for, for a, for a um, chaotic system have two pieces. There's a piece which is smooth in energy in proportion to the unit matrix. This just corresponds to the fact that if you measure a small subsystem of any high energy system, it always looks like it's in thermal equilibrium. And then there's a random matrix piece. If you apply this onsatz to the, uh, the the opposite side correlator in the general case, you find that it's always exponentially small and dominated by this random phase behavior. Um, in the last 30 seconds, there's a question that's been asked many times. If there is a firewall, uh, why should the Hawking calculation give the right flux? Since the Hawking calculation, at least in most forms, like the adiabatic form, uses I, uses the fact that the geometry stretches across the horizon. Uh, well, okay, so the Hawking flux is determined by the density matrix for this outside mode B. 
again, by properties of thermal equilibrium, this is the same for every microstate as it is in the thermofield state. Since the thermofield state does have a geometric interpretation, um, the hawking how calculation holds for it. And so by universality of thermal behavior, it holds for every state. And so without knowing anything about the interior for a general black hole microstate, you can conclude that the Hawking calculation is valid. And unlike the usual derivation of the flux, this doesn't imply that the fine-grained result will agree with Hawking's information losing result. So um, I'm out of time, just in time. I, you know, from thinking about this subject a great deal, um, I think that what we're really missing is a more complete theory of quantum gravity in the book. Everything you hear from me is, and, and from other people working on this subject is, is these indirect logical arguments, not things that really follow from a fundamental theory of gravity in the bulk. And I think that it points to a big gap in, in our understanding of quantum gravity. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Questions or comments? Over there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, you gave a new argument for why firewalls happen in the first part of the talk, but this argument seemed like it might also be applicable to Rindler horizons. What keeps firewalls from forming in Rindler horizons with this argument? Um, well, Rindler horizons have infinite number of states, and we don't encounter, we encounter Rindler horizons in the analog of a thermal field state, not in genera. In fact, if I in fact, I mean, in some sense, I think, I think Mark Van Ramsdonk has addressed this by, you know, with this point that um, the Rindler horizon is smooth only for a very special entanglement to the two sides, and generic states of the two sides do have the analog of a firewall. There's a question over there. So if there is such a thing as a firewall, I suppose one should also hope to be able to understand it from another point of view. In other words, seeing some kind of dynamical mechanism, why stuff wants to collect, why there's this extraordinary... Absolutely, stuff. absolutely. That's why, I mean, that's... Has yeah, been, that's why I make this final, I mean, right, all, as I said, all these arguments are indirect. We're lacking a direct description of non-perturbative dynamics. I mean, one thing that's on the market is fuzzballs. My, my, que my, my question was, I guess you already answered it, is, is there any inkling of how such a thing might come to be? So, the one theory on the market is uh, fuzzballs, and the one calculation there is the estimate that the very small amplitude for a, a brain to tunnel out to the horizon um, um, is offset by the very large number of possible states. Um, I don't have anything better to offer. Uh, I should say that Samir and his colleagues don't believe that in fact there is a firewall even though there are fuzzballs and have just written a long paper explaining why they believe this. Um, no, I mean, I mean, you one. Well, what, uh, no, I, 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 I'll just say this as many times as you ask. Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Well, why is it quantum gravity since it happens for, for arbitrarily large black holes? What, what? Uh, uh, right. So, so, so obviously this. So the, the, the thing that makes the horizon special is not a local property but a global property, and. Um, and, and, so, and so this is a, a, a manifestation of the fact that quantum gravity is fundamentally non-local. You know, you know, we, we used to say those words in the context of nice slices where we thought it was involved things very non-local across a very long space-like slice in the interior of the black hole. And, and nice slices no longer appear in the discussion. Effective field theory is in trouble already right at the horizon, not deep inside. Okay, well, I think we should move on. Let's thank our speaker again.